Hello viewers and welcome to Top Notch Education Consultants. Uh, this is a channel uh, where we deal with the digital contents that uh, we teach at our schools. And in today's program, uh, we'll be looking at uh, uh, the set book Fathers of Nations by Paul B. Vita. Uh, we are going to share certain approaches that we feel uh, are key when it comes to uh, delivery of this uh, uh, set novel. If you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, kindly do so because we have a lot that we would want to share uh, with you. Uh, many teachers have asked me the best approach uh, to use uh, when you teach uh, Fathers of Nations. The argument has always been that the book is rather complex, which I also agree with because uh, when you read through the text, it doesn't have what you call a simple plot. A simple plot is where events are actually serialized in a way that uh, uh, you can easily follow uh, the plot or the order of events as they unveil themselves in a text. But when you read through uh, Fathers of Nations, uh, this is a little different because the book actually begins at its very end. It begins at the point where the African heads of state have met at Banjul, the Gambia, and it is in this meeting that they would want to discuss African developmental issues. It is after that that uh, we are taken back uh, to the lives of the characters that are involved in this text. So when the book begins, we are presented with four characters. I call them uh, the four part alpha uh, characters or observers. Uh, we have Professor Karanja Kimani that comes from Kenya. We have Gombile Melusi from uh, Zimbabwe. We have Seif Tahir who is an engineer, comes from uh, Libya. And finally, we have Pastor Chineke Chiamaka uh, from Nigeria. They're just checking in uh, at the Seamount Hotel in Banjul. They have been assigned duties at the summit uh, by uh, uh, Chad Longway, who is actually the coordinator of the Path Alpha. So today, I would want to share with you uh, the best way uh, to study this book. Because you realize that uh, once the author is through with a character, the author then moves to another character. And all that he wants to say in terms of the thematic approach actually is delivered to us uh, through the characters that uh, uh, he is actually using as a vehicle to tell his story. And that is why I believe, and I believe strongly, that if you want to deliver very good content that will be understood easily by your students, you should go at the, the character approach. I know there are some novels that when you read, uh, you feel there are so many events, and therefore you can use those events uh, to unveil the book. But for this particular uh, set book, and for this particular novel, Fathers of Nations, the best approach that I have discovered is the character approach. Because once you study a character and the events that revolve around that character, then you realize that you shall have understood the issues or the thematic issues that are being brought out by uh, the author. And that is why I always say that for you to understand this text, you must understand it uh, when you first understand uh, the four path alpha observers. The ones that I've mentioned, Pastor Chine Kachiamaka, Engineer Tahir, uh, uh, Professor Kimani, and also Gombile Melusi from Zimbabwe. Uh, for this particular uh, program, I want to pick a character. 
uh, that is Professor Kimani Karanja from Kenya, and how Karanja helps us to understand certain things that are coming out in this text. Now, we all know the background of Professor Karanja Kimani. We first meet him when he receives a call uh, from uh, the guide, the guy who identifies himself as the guide. That is the first time we meet him. Of course, when we meet him, we find him a very temperamental person uh, because of that kind of conversation that I had uh, with the guide. Because he insists that the guide should actually uh, give the name. But the guide says that uh, he's not going to give his name because what they intend to do is, at st is still at its very beginning and they are not supposed to identify themselves. So Professor Kananja Kimani is uncomfortable with that kind of approach where someone calls you but doesn't want to give you his name. That is the first time we meet him. Now, the second time that we meet him is when now we are taken to the changes that he wanted uh, to bring at the University of Nairobi. We are told that having studied uh, at the University of Oxford, he now goes to University of Nairobi uh, to teach at the university and he's going to teach uh, developmental uh, studies at the University of Nairobi. Now, when he arrives at the university, because of his hard work, he gets a promotion to the level of a senior professor. And that tells you he's a very knowledgeable person, an intelligent person, and a very progressive person. Because he insists when he arrives at the university that the university should actually be relevant to the people. And that even the motto of the university should be changed. And he's been able uh, to do this single-heartedly, even when... Uh, people thought that his arguments are rather radical and do not see the light of day. So from there, we find that he is someone who really would want change. And therefore, from the perspective that we learn him, we understand the idea of the theme of change. The way he is turned around the University of Nairobi uh, to be relevant uh, to the the, the people, and also even changing the motto of the university. So he's someone who actually is very progressive and brings out the idea of change uh, very well. So we understand uh, the theme of change through Professor Karanga Kimani. That is the first time we meet him. Now, the second time that we meet Professor Karanga Kimani, uh, there is a discussion in his family uh, is actually discussing issues of security with his daughter, that is Tuni. Uh, remember that uh, Tuni is their only child and only daughter. Tuni was conceived when they went to Tunis. And uh, uh, they, they must have gone there uh, for some visit. Uh, but again, uh, Tuni is actually at the heart of Professor Kimani. Now, there is the idea of, ins of insecurity that is coming out in the discussion between Professor Kimani, Tuni, and the mother. For Professor Kimani, he believes that security is a government responsibility because uh, the citizens actually pay taxes and it is out of their taxes that the government should provide security for them. Unfortunately, that is not what is happening. And Professor Kimani feels uh, that uh, uh, the government actually has not uh, offered leadership when it comes to issues of security. On the flip side, his daughter Tuni feels uh, that security should be an individual affair. And that is why he's even gone for a seminar where they've been trained of how to take care of their security as women. Because women are more vulnerable when it comes to issues of security. So for Professor Kimani, uh, security is a government function. And therefore, everybody is supposed to uh, be taken care of in terms of security by the government. While Tuni feels that security begins with an individual. That is the second time that you meet Professor 
Kimani. The third time that we meet Professor Kimani is when they have been mourning their daughter Tuni. That is after the road accident where Tuni was involved in and Tuni unfortunately died. So when we meet Professor Kimani and the wife Asia Omundi, they are not treating from the same script because Asia believes that uh, Professor Kimani is responsible, is responsible for the death of Tuni. And why? Professor Kimani is poor, yet is a don at the university, doesn't earn as much as what the MPs are getting. And that is why he's actually having a yellow pee of a car. And Tuni had asked, I requested the father to give her the car uh, for the seminar while she was going to the seminar. But remember the car uh, that broke a uh, breakdown and therefore uh, Professor Kimani was unable to give Tuni the car. So when Tuni is involved in a road accident, uh, because it she was using the public uh, service vehicle, then the mother blames that on Professor Kimani. And it is at that level that the mother finally decides to leave Professor Kimani. Professor Kimani helps us to understand the theme of immorality because Asia Omundi has decided to leave Professor Kimani simply because he's poor. And therefore, through Professor Kimani, we are able to see the theme of immorality. Uh, a wife can leave a husband simply because he's poor uh, to get married uh, to an MP because an MP has got a lot of wealth. So that is an issue of concern uh, to us immorality. But even in that particular discussion uh, between Professor Kimani and the wife, we also realize that uh, uh, Professor Kimani uh, doesn't like uh, the idea of how much the MPs are earning. At some discussion between uh, Asiya and, and himself, and that is before Tuni died, and Tuni was also involved in this discussion. Professor Kimani had actually talked about what we call the parliamentary coup, where we no longer have the physical coups, but we have what we call the parliamentary coups, where members of parliament can easily uh, manipulate laws, change laws, and these laws are changed to benefit them like the laws of taxation, where they exempt themselves from paying tax. And that makes them extremely rich at the expense of those who have the knowledge, like himself, who should actually be earning better than the MPs. And that could be the reason why he feels very bitter with Walumu Newborn, who has taken or has snatched the wife away from him. So uh, it is from that perspective that we also realize the theme of impunity that a whole MP who is supposed to take care of the citizens actually snatches a wife from one of the citizens because he's got a lot of money and because no one can do him anything. So we realize that there is the theme of impunity brought out by what has happened to Professor uh, Kimani. Again, we realize uh, that uh, the issues of uh, corruption uh, because the way that uh, Newman Walomu has got to his position is not well explained. Of course, he was at the university at some point and all of a sudden he's got a lot of wealth that he's got three brand new cars, luxurious cars. And apart from that, she's got, he's got three wives to boot. So we are, we, we, we are suspect. We, we are actually suspecting that uh, Newborn Malomo has not got his wealth the right way. So it is through Professor Kimani that we see a lot of things that are coming out very well in the text. I have talked about the theme of change while he was at the University of Nairobi. I have talked about the theme of immorality when the wife leaves him for newborn Walomu. I have talked about the theme of uh, uh, impunity when 
a whole MP takes away the wife of a citizen. That is not fair enough. So a character can help us to see quite a number of issues that are coming out in the text. And finally, uh, there is also the theme of betrayal coming out. Because remember that the University of Nairobi was at the heart of Professor Karanja Kimani. And when he arrived, he wanted changes, which he was able to, uh, to do, the changes that he wanted implemented at the university. It is ironic that at the end of the day, the same university actually sends him home. The university that he has worked so hard to build now sends him home. That means the university has actually betrayed the trust of Professor Kimani. So betrayal also comes out there when you critically analyze uh, the way they have treated Professor Kimani simply because uh, he had actually confronted an MP. And in fact, it was the MP who was in the wrong. And now they are saying that uh, the professor brought the name of the university into disrepute. And therefore, they had to dismiss him. So ladies and gentlemen, as we watch the character of Professor Karanja Kimani, we can learn so much in terms of themes. Uh, and this you can do when you study uh, what revolves around his life. Thank you very much. Uh, next time we'll be discussing another character and we will see how these characters actually influence the themes that are coming out in the text. May God bless you abundantly as you continue to listen to our programs. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and be part of this great discussion. God bless.